watched it on the channel, you guys have enjoyed quite a bit. Those are some tips and tricks for the Z Flip 5 and the Z Fold 5 to give you some of those more advanced features that you probably didn't even know existed. Well, today we're going to actually cover five more features that cover general information on the Galaxy devices that will be surprising you because they actually are included, but again, you have to know how to turn them on. This is TK and this is five advanced tips and tricks that you probably didn't know existed but are going to make your life so much easier. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So in front of us, we have the Z Flip 5, the Z Fold 5, and of course the S23 Ultra. These are technically the flagship devices, or at least these two are considered to be their flagship foldable, flagship smartphone, that are all powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 made for Galaxy. So a very unique experience from Qualcomm made specifically for Galaxy devices in 2023. And one of the biggest things that you probably always never really thought about till it actually gets to the point that you need it is how do I actually save content in a specific format? So I'm gonna talk specifically, let's go ahead and go into the Z Flip 5. Let's say somebody sends you a contract in an email and say please sign this contract and then send it back you don't have a scanner you want to take a picture but you don't want to send them back a jpeg you want to send it to them as a pdf well the samsung gallery actually has that functionality built into it you actually have to know how to turn it on For that we will go down to the sandwich menu on the bottom right go into settings scroll down and go all the way down to about gallery now once we're here all you have to do is basically press on the gallery app about 10 times continuously till you get that little notification on the bottom of your screen that tells you that you have now access to it this is something that is very simple all you have to do is well, actually mistakenly i was pressing on the word gallery it's on the word version once you have that on you go back into the actual section you notice that there's now a section called gallery labs and that's something that was wasn't there before. Um, all you have to do in there is you basically turn that on once you have that in there. You can also, by the way, make it go away if you don't want to see it again by just unchecking this box. But this is one of the first sections that you're definitely going to want to do. This is because now we have the ability of turning on support save as PDF. You can actually save directly from the gallery into a PDF. I can take a picture of a document, sign it, get it done and go straight from there. Video player mode on film strip default. This is something that you also, if you're not familiar with this, the old school style of a, a video player that was built in directly into the gallery app is also something we can turn back on. You can also play with the day cluster merging a picture image list here, uh, video preview and picture list. And of course, show the trash storage information if you want to be able to see that. And of course, um, album entry lock. If this is something that you want to be able to do, you can lock a specific album directly in your gallery app by just doing so by going in. We'll go ahead and go back out. Now, once you turned on those two functionalities, there's two things we could do. To lock a folder specifically, just go ahead and select an actual album directly in your section. Under the three dot menu option on now, you have the ability of say lock album. Now, this album basically becomes where you actually have to put your lock screen credentials to be able to access it. And this is something that's unique because now even the images that are inside of that album no longer show there. And of course, if you do want to unlock the album, just go go into it once, unlock it using the pin, go to the three section menu here on the top and say unlock album. From that on, it goes back to normal section. But let's say you want to be able to print something directly into PDF. Let's say there's a few documents, you took some pictures, you got the email with the documents, you printed them out, you signed them, you're ready to go. I'm going to select three images here just for the sake of creation. And the bottom here, we have now a button that says create. On that, on the bottom here, now we have save to PDF and that generates that PDF image for us. And it makes it so much easier for us to be able to share that content. Simple, easy, directly within the gallery app. No need to download any additional applications. You just have to basically unlock the potential directly in there. And again, as you saw, there's a lot more options within the labs. It's simple. Just go straight into settings, down into the gallery lab about gallery and press on the version about 10 times. And basically you'll see here, you'll be able to get the information. If you thought that was something very functional, I hope that you enjoyed that. Next one we're going to talk about is actually a feature you probably didn't even realize that One UI, the launcher for One UI supports. And it is something that's been available for some time. And that's the ability of actually stacking widgets on top of each other. That's something that's very unique. An example here, I'm actually showing you guys real quick. Let's go ahead and click it. This is the Netflix uh, stack and you're able to create multiple stacks of things. An example would be press and hold on the actual widget itself that you have. And you'll notice there's a button that says edit stack. Now, typically if you had another widget, an example here, I can just press and select it. It says create stack as opposed to edit it. And what I like about this is it now allows us to actually have multiple functional specifically widgets in a smaller area. So an example, this is our weather widget. So let's go ahead and basically say, I'm going to make this widget a little bit bigger. I'm going to let it go sit. And I'm actually going to go ahead and say, create stack. I can go in, customize whatever I want. Let's say I want to be able to put in my gallery uh, option. I'll go ahead and add that in there and I'll say allow. Now you'll notice my gallery is sitting there. If I swipe away, it's my weather widget and it does not show that it's sitting there. It's very nice. And only you know that if you can actually switch over, you're able to get directly access to this. 
Again, same thing, I can actually swipe it over. It only works on widgets, not on actual icons. So if I press on uh, basic for the app, you'll notice it does not allow me to do so. You do need to have a, have a widget on there and whatever the size of the widget is, it'll basically allow you to put that in. For me, I put it in directly with, uh, with uh, Netflix here, but again, you can add any other widget that your system supports. It's absolutely nice and it maximizes that display that you have to the fullest. So the next feature we're gonna talk about is gonna be a lifesaver because I've had this happen to me multiple times where I go into a meeting, I put my phone on, on vibrate and I forget to take it off of vibrate and it kills me because I can never hear things going on. An example what I would do is just basically bring down the volume and put it into vibrate mode and then I just typically forget. It's just something that I don't remember how to do. It's just that you have to remember to go back in and change it. Now the easy way to do this is very simple. You go directly into your notification panel, press and hold on the actual muting functionality and notice you have the three different profiles. Sound, vibrate and mute. If I hit the mute, this is actually something that comes up right away. It's called temporary mute use. You can turn it on and customize it. Let's say I'm going into a meeting for an hour to two hours. I just turn that on and set. And after two hours, the mute goes back to the last thing that it was configured before going into it. Very nice and very simple. And now I don't have to worry about missing any notifications. You may miss them for about an hour, but if you know you needed to have your phone in silent for a specific amount of time, let's say watching a movie, going into a meeting, now you know that the phone won't forget about it and it'll get you back right away as soon as the meeting is done. The next feature is going to be super nice and very very simple for us to use this is something that i've enjoyed using on pixel devices for quite some time and that's the ability of basically selecting the text within an image so you notice right here i actually don't have a way of selecting text on this and that's something that is because you just don't have access to it if you click on it here i can press and hold i don't have access to a way of copying this now this is being used as an example, obviously this is not gonna be used this way, but let's say you're doing a search on, YouTube, uh, on Google or something like that and you find some text that you wanna be able to copy over to something else. This is a real quick way to do it. As opposed to basically worrying about going recent, which is what typically pixels will do and gives us access to be able to select the text, all you have to do is, as long as you're on the page itself, go ahead and basically do a quick screenshot on directly using your device and hit that little T uh, access at the bottom. You notice that every single piece of text that was originally a selectable uh, basically menu in here is now selectable. You can copy paste it and it does a, a pretty good readout of this. And you can definitely see that it even selects the words at the top. Very functional, it works on images, it works on documents, it works on anything as long as it's on your display and it's legible, it'll be able to make it into a selectable access and you can basically select, go down, and then of course say copy and then put it directly into your other document or text message or so on. If you've used a Samsung device for quite some time, you may or may not have noticed that sometimes when you're taking an image, when you take a picture with the device, so let's go ahead and launch the camera real quick. Now you probably have taken a picture with your device and you notice that there's somewhat of a delay. Let's go ahead and take a picture real quick. You notice how when I hit the button released, it was actually almost like a millisecond of a delay. And that's because Samsung's actually using uh, the algorithm to be able to take the best image possible. Well, there isn't actually a module directly within GoodLock or even a downloadable uh, application straight by itself in the Galaxy Store, so directly into the Galaxy Store. It's called Camera Assistant. It's an application that you can download. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And this is something that you can download and install directly on your device. You can use it directly within GoodLock. GoodLock does house that in there, so you can download and install it there. But one of the main benefits that we have here is basically uh, picture softening fixes that image if you've ever had that situation where you feel like the images that are coming out of your camera are over sharpened it'll actually allow you to reduce the sharpening effect not reduce the quality of the picture but reduces the sharpening effect there the auto lens switching that's also something that if you definitely want to control what lens is being used this is something that allows you to turn that off uh, so the system doesn't automatically switch between the telephoto and the primary lens depending on what you're doing with if you're pinching and zooming but the one that I'm really wanting to share with you guys here is the quick tap shutter. That allows us to actually speed up that process where the camera now essentially is not necessarily trying to uh, process too much time to take a picture. By the time I hit the button, the picture gets taken. By the time, I mean, it, it's almost an instantaneous functionality and it's very simple, easy to set up. Just download the camera assistant. And of course, there's a lot more other options that you have in there. Capture speed is in uh, prioritize quality. You can also go prioritize uh, enhanced speed and quality, kind of a balanced experience. Uh, video recording in photo mode, this is when you press and hold the uh, shutter button and it starts taking a video. That's something you can turn on as well. And camera timeout, a couple of minutes if you do want to extend that so that the camera app doesn't actually shut down by itself. Dim displays uh, while recording helps you reduce battery, uh, battery consumption. One of the things that it does when we're outdoors and there's a lot of light, typically the device increases the brightness on the display to match the outside uh, light so that you have the best visibility. Unfortunately, what that generates essentially is a lot more power consumption because the display is running at its brightest and of course it's running the cameras and of course a lot more things going on. This can help you also uh, reduce battery consumption as it reduces the brightness on the display. Very nice, very simple, easy to download. Camera Assistant is a must.
Now, these are few functional things, and these are true to life things that I found in my life that helped me save so much time. Specifically, that saved the PDF, because in the past, I've had to download a separate app to do this, and it's always been something for me because I get a lot of contracts, a lot of agreements that I have to sign, and I typically have to basically, either, if I'm not using, obviously, the Fold, because you can sign with the Fold, that's one of the main benefits of having a foldable display or even an S23 Ultra, uh, and that's built in using Adobe Acrobat. So if you don't have this, but let's say you have other documents you want to be able to take images with we all know that in the camera when you have your phone on top of a document it automatically gives you that outline of a document and it scans it almost it saves it as a, uh, an actual image but it's just the actual document now you can transfer that over to a pdf on any samsung galaxy device and send that over without having to download a pc app download another app or anything like that to save that and of course temporary mute is something that i feel like a lot of us don't even know exists because we typically do this to re we turn on the volume rocker and we reduce the audio all the way to the bottom if you turn it on now you see it and you be able to actually manually change it so just be aware open it up go to the notification panel and set it to be temporary for an hour to two hours however long you want it to be quiet and then it goes back to being normal of course uh, the locking the folder and the ability of doing all the other stuff that i shared with you guys specifically on the camera side are always nice little things that can help you because over time, you notice that, that that delay in image taking gets longer and longer as the device gets older. This may help you actually reduce the amount of time. And of course, if you have any issues with that sharpening, turn on that softening option and it reduces the amount of sharpening that you get in these images. Again, a lot of functions built into these devices. I do hope that you guys are enjoying your Flip 5 and your Z Fold 5 or the S23 Ultra. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other tips and tricks that you guys like that I haven't covered yet. I'll see you in the next video.